The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been seen from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, 
Where is their God? The Word of the Lord. Psalm 51 Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give you a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time, see now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in affliction, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness, for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for this Ash Wednesday is from St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Beware of practicing piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. 
So whenever you give alms, do not, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father in who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been told over and over for almost a year now that we need to be washing our hands. Wash your hands for 20 seconds and try and wash that virus away. Sing happy birthday twice as you're washing your hands and wash them whenever you get the chance. We've also been, at least I've been, I know, a little obsessed with cleaning things. As you can see, in, in, you can see it in the things that we're still having trouble finding in the stores. I was so excited a couple of weeks ago when I found Lysol wipes in the store, and I was allowed to buy two containers at once. Two containers! It was like Christmas all over again. But why are we doing all this? We're doing it to keep the virus away. And the way to do that seems to be to keep clean, to wear a mask to protect our face, to wash our hands, to wash the germs away, to wipe them away, and certainly not to share them on purpose with anyone else. We have spent almost a year now washing things away. But now we get to Ash Wednesday, and traditionally, at least, we would go to worship this day and make ourselves a little dirty. Not filthy, not gross and disgusting, but a little bit dusty, at least. We would come forward and have ashes placed on our forehead and be reminded that you aren't just a little bit dusty, but you are made of dust, and to dust you shall return. It's kind of a strange moment that we would have when we have been trying to be so clean for so long. And now all of a sudden, we're making ourselves dirty on purpose. Now, unfortunately, the reality is that that moment probably won't happen for very many of us this day because we aren't gathering in person for worship quite yet. And maybe your congregation is doing things in different ways. I know us at St. John's, we're going to have stickers to put on that have a cross to show our faith in this way. And the reality of Ash Wednesday is to remind ourselves, though, that as much as we have tried to be clean and as much as we have tried to wash the germs away, we have to remind ourselves that we are not as clean as we would like. We aren't able to wash the sin away with soap and water, and we aren't able to wash it away ourselves at all. 
we have to trust that that sin that we are reminded of this day can only be washed clean through God. And so maybe that little bit of dust isn't such a terrible thing. It's not such a terrible reminder to be reminded that we are not as clean as we want to be. And it has nothing to do with germs or viruses. It simply has to do with our sinful selves. We get reminded this day that we are dust. And to dust we shall return. Because not only are we not as washed clean as we think, but we are also mortal. We are also temporary in this world. We've certainly been reminded of that fact in the last year as we've lost well over 400,000 people in our country alone to a virus that we can't even see. But there is hope. There is hope this day. When we hear in the scripture that where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Our treasure is not in things of this world. Our treasure is not containers of Lysol wipes. Our treasure is not who can wash their hands for the longest. Because our treasure is not of this world. Our treasure is of those from above. That's where our heart is. That's where our hope is. As we're reminded this day that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. It is in that returning to dust that we will see the promises fulfilled. Know the joy of God's love and presence that we cannot imagine. Remember that you are dust. And to dust you shall return. And when you return to that dust, there will be hope. There will be healing. There will be wholeness. There will be no more death. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. When my heart is almost breaking, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, walk with me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, walk with me. When my head is bowed in sorrow, Jesus to walk with me. Friends in Christ.
Today, with the whole church, we enter a time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, from our neighbors, and from creation, so that we do not enjoy the life that our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, of self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and the works of love, strengthened by gifts of word and sacrament, let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another, and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our own fault, by our own fault, and by our most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, our mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have affected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you, O oh God. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May the ashes we have received, or the tracing of the cross on our foreheads, be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to take your, your thumb and trace the sign of the cross on your forehead. We remember that we are dust and to dust we shall return. Let us pray. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. May Almighty God have mercy on us, 
Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O God, you call your church, your people, to be ministers of active reconciliation within your church and throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation and living expression of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, in the midst of continued uncertainty, you call your church, its leaders, and your people to new ventures of which we cannot see the ending, through perils unknown, by paths untrod. Grant to us, your children, an awareness of your presence and a strong confidence in you, in our pain, our weariness, and our anxiety. Surround us with your care, protect us by your loving might, and give us faith to continue going out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants, and you declared that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be responsible and conscientious caretakers of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and continue to raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the least, the lost, the overlooked, the ignored, and the forgotten. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name in our hearts or on our lips at this time. And support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are love, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with grace those journeying toward baptism, and call us all to repentance during this Lenten season, as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lutherans believe that the bread and wine of Holy Communion are signs given by God that Christ is fully present among us. We invite you to participate in receiving this miraculous presence. If you are unable to receive either the bread and or the wine, be assured that even in the words, Christ is present with you. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation, 
Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brought together by the Holy Spirit from all the places we are right now, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole of earth to himself. Come to this meal, and be fed. The body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve us in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table, we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, pass from self-indulgence, and above all that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is right. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people. 
Love and serve God. Rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hey. 